How's everybody's day so far? Good. How's your day? Very productive. Very productive. Very, very productive. Uh, getting our team on. Who is it? Uh, Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody that's joining us on TikTok and Messenger. We are bringing over our friends uh, from Facebook. So give me one more second here. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and get your, your Bibles out and turn to Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 6. That's what we're going to pick up tonight. We'll have some discussion. I'll answer some questions in the chat. We'll, let, we'll allow the team uh, to jump in here, just making sure we are all set up. The wife won't be with me tonight. Uh, she had an obligation. And so... Uh, we will carry on and see here. All right. We're live there. Is that, is that, who is that over there? Let me see who that is. Jamie. Jamie, you're supposed to be celebrating an uh, anniversary. All right. I don't want to miss Bible study either. You don't want to miss Bible study. You should take the night off on Bible study and go celebrate. Tell, tell Michael we said hello. All right. So let's have a word, a word of prayer. And then we're going to get right into this. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in our lives and how he's going to continue moving in our lives. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Verse 6, Lord, we just want to pause and thank you for getting us through this part of the day. We don't get through the day without you. We don't even <laughs> attempt to, to deal with life's challenges without your peace, without your help, without your love. And so I'm asking you tonight to guide us in this Bible study. Go before us and help us, Lord, um, learn what it is you want us to learn. Can't even learn without you. So lead us through the scriptures. Um, may we ask some really, really good questions. And I ask that whoever you send this way on TikTok, on Facebook, on uh, Messenger, and then whoever hears this later on um, YouTube, Lord, I pray that it is a blessing to their souls. That's our prayer. We love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. All right, so let me make sure we have, uh, that's there. All right, so just to recap, if you're joining us for uh, Bible study for the first time, what we've done for the last year, I think we started at the beginning of the year, we started going through verse by verse, chapter by chapter of Matthew chapter five, six, and seven. Uh, I, I selected Matthew five, six, and seven because that was our, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua's first address to a group of people publicly. And when he went through this address, uh, he addressed almost everything in the Ten Commandments. Um, and he spoke in such a way that was authoritative. Uh, he spoke in a way that no, no one could challenge him because he was doing it off of memory. He did it off of memory because he's the one who created the foundation of truth. And so as he was sharing truth with them, he went beyond just the 10 laws, but applied the heart issue and the grace issue of what was seen. And so what we've seen so far uh, in chapter five, he went over the Beatitudes, thou shalt not, I mean, uh, blessed are they, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn. He explains that before I even get into the other pieces of how important this is, I, I need to share with you where your blessings come from. There's a blessing on each one of these. And then he explains how you, you being humble, you being meek, you being a peacemaker makes you salt and light for the whole earth and that the earth needs us. He goes on to say that I'm not here to cancel out the law, but I'm here to fulfill it, to say it's finished, it's done, to split the veil in half and get us to a point where we truly can love people the way that he loves them. 
So then he goes into love. He says, here's what love looks like. Don't take anger out on people. Don't avenge for yourselves. Don't commit adultery. Don't divorce people. And it wasn't just the, the law itself. It, it was the heart of the issue. And he said, do not murder. It wasn't about taking a knife or a gun and doing something violent. He said, your heart should love people. Your heart should forgive people. Your, sharp, your heart should be compassionate. The same way the Lord has forgiven you, you should love people. So don't look at your brother. Don't look at your sister and, and look at them in such a way that is hurtful and, and harmful. Uh, and so he went through this whole thing on teaching of the loving of the enemy. That was chapter five. Chapter six, we studied. Um, then how what our response is to the public, to people outside of just the Ten Commandments in the church. He says, here's how you should act when you get around people who need things. Don't act like you're doing your gifts in public and making a big deal out of things. Here's how you should pray. Here's how you should fast. Here's how you should store up treasures on earth. Here's how you should look at things because the eye is the lamp. You can't serve two masters. You have to pick somebody to serve here on earth. Quit worrying about the things on earth. Put me first. Seek me first. And then everything else will come to you. Quit worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries. Let's focus on today. So then we get into chapter seven and where we picked up last week. And I got a lot of good questions this week. Um, but what we picked up last week as he goes into seven now, he's established how to love people, how to treat people, what the heart of the commandments are. Now he goes into this next piece. And last week we learned, he said, before you can go tell somebody else what to do, make sure that you don't have a plank in your own eye. Before you try to tell someone else uh, their smell, make sure you clean yours up. And so this week we're going to pick up at verse six, and we're going to try to get through six through 11 tonight, verse by verse. And we're going to pause at each verse after I go through it. And then we're going to ask some questions, see what your thoughts are. We have with us uh, on the messenger. I have Gracie and sister Mary Lou, and they'll be uh, interacting with us tonight. So here's what it says in the living Bible. Don't give holy things to depraved men. Don't give your pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls, turn, and attack them. Here's, here's what it says in the old King James uh, version. Matthew chapter 5, I mean Matthew chapter 7, picking up at verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. And so this version includes the original uh, nomenclature of a dog, whereas the living Bible doesn't. Neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn again and rend you. Give that which is, give not that which is holy to dogs neither cast your pearls before swine start us off tonight miss gracie uh, what are your thoughts opinions when you read that scripture when you hear that scripture uh, what comes to mind you're on mute if you if you're talking to me she's trying to take herself off you maybe mary lou you can jump in if you want either one of you I'll read some comments here on TikTok. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. What's your thoughts on, out there on, on Facebook and TikTok when you hear verse six? Do not give what is holy unto dogs. He used two different animals. We'll get into the, the meaning of some of this in a moment, but I want to hear what you have to say. Won't talk to me tonight. What are your thoughts? Let's see here. Miss Gracie, you're still on a uh, mute just in case you, you're you talking and you don't think you are. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So as they're thinking through it and I'm looking at the comments, you're reading your Bibles with me tonight. Uh, dogs and pigs. 
dogs and pigs. Uh, before I go into the difference between a dog and a pig, which is the obvious, there's some spiritual uh, connotations there that we'll talk about. Um, this scripture comes from, again, Yeshua knows the scripture because he was there as all of it was written. It comes from Leviticus chapter 22, verses 6, and then again in that same chapter, verse 15. And it's when the priests are letting the people know that there are certain things that are holy that shouldn't even come in to, to contact with our sacrifices. Remember, back then they sacrificed animals to the Lord. It was a big old barbecue. One third of the sacrifice went to the Lord. It burnt up completely. It burned to a black crisp. One third went to the priest. They ate for themselves. And one third of the sacrifice went to the people who were doing the sacrifice. And you sat around and you said, Lord, we're so sorry for our sins. We're, or whatever the festival was, and you'd have a barbecue. And the smoke would go up to the Lord and everyone would get their portion. And if there was any left over, every now and then, what would happen was that they would allow dogs to to eat the sacrifice. And what, what was happening in Leviticus chapter 22, they were telling everyone, don't ever give what we've dedicated to the Lord. Don't ever give what we've sacrificed, what we've given that's now uh, 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 a holy communion, so to speak. Don't ever give it to dogs. Don't give it to swine. Don't, don't ever put yourself in a position where the thing that is holy is given to someone or something that's not holy. And so they used dogs, dogs in the Eastern, uh, the, the Eastern world, uh, they don't look at dogs the way that we look at dogs. Uh, they would look at a dog the way that we would probably look at rats. Does that make sense to you? Back in the ancient time, you can go find different studies where there were no dogs roaming around Jerusalem in the streets as pets and friendly people. I know that we today, Right. We we cherish dogs. We we have a uh, be very careful because I know there's a lot of dog lovers out there. They're your, your, your what they call fur babies. Right. They ride in your front car. Um, they eat out of your the same bowls and cups that we eat out of. But in the Eastern culture, uh, they were regarded as almost like rats. Does that make sense so far? So when the scripture says do not give holy things to dogs, that's the reason why. Um, and then swine, everyone understands that swine was forbidden. Dogs were somewhat acceptable, but not you know, in the home back in that culture, whereas swine were filthy. They, they represented uh, the form of evil. If you think about a swine, swine even now, a pig, they wallow in their own what? their own mud, their own dirt. And so you have two different type of people that Yeshua is very clear about that. I, w I don't want you giving all of these truths that I'm giving you to people who don't understand holiness. I just went through chapter five and chapter six with you. He said, I just shared with you the Beatitudes, how to be salt and light. I shared with you the, how I'm fulfilling the law. I'm going into deep detail on anger and how to not commit adultery and divorce. And I've gone, I've gone through all these things that are a little bit different than what most men understand. So as you start to give these things to other people, you got to have a discerning spirit and do not give these things, do not teach these things, do not um, even cohabitate amongst these kind of holy things. We're holy, we're the temple amongst dogs and pigs. Let me pause right there and see what comments or thoughts you have. I'll entertain any questions tonight. Here's Bible study. We're just studying the Bible. I'm going to give you some scriptures to go back and reference. Um, Sister Kendall on Facebook, thank you for joining us. She said, don't give to someone that's unworthy. Yeah. So now we have to define, Kendall, uh, what's what's unworthy? Is it just anybody who who cusses and fusses and, and goes about their way? Or is it someone who truly is a swine or a dog? So I guess we have to define even further what a swine and a dog is. is that Does that help so far? Any thoughts, comments, put them in the chat. Hello, Dre, Brother Ron, everybody that's over there on the, the TikTok. Gracie or Jamie, 
Do you have any opinions or thoughts so far? Before we keep going here, I'll give you a little bit more insight. Okay. So I'll keep teaching here. So desecration or, or profanity, something that was just, yeah, you don't do that. Uh, you got to ask yourself this question as he teaches about holiness. He's not teaching about the laws. He's not teaching about keeping commandments and following somebody's rules. He's teaching about the heart of the matter. Um, and so when you look at the scripture, the pearl was considered back in that time, the, the costliest, most rarest jewel that you could probably find. He even gives a parable in Matthew chapter 13 about a pearl, that it's the most precious, most valuable thing a man could find. And he would do anything. He would sell anything to go get that pearl. And so to represent these two clear opposite contrasts of something that was def defiling and something that cost so much, clearly lets us know how important it is that the Lord sees that we have to be very careful when we present the truth of the gospel to everybody. I'll tell you tonight as we're going through Bible study, and I'll give you some scriptures here as we go through this, but I'm just kind of sharing. Not everybody will get the gospel. Not everybody's ready to hear the gospel. Not everybody that we're around, even in our own circles, hearts are prepared for different parts of the, of the gospel. We have to be aware that we don't disclose things to people who, who aren't ready. We see it in, in, uh, even in the, the chats and TikTok, the number of people who push back, the number of people who we call trolls, right? Uh, they can't receive something as holy if their hearts aren't right. And so that's why I don't even argue with them. It's like talking to a wall, talking to a tree. There, there's no evidence of any change because they're not prepared. The dog was less filthy compared again to the, the pig. Uh, again, the Lord knew our adoration of a dog as society and time would go on. So that's why he threw the pig, in my opinion, into this story. Um, it's still a dog. Uh, it's, it's nature is still a dog. And again, he used the dog, I think, for us to understand that as cuddly and as kind and as faithful as a dog can be, they'll still chew up your slippers. They don't understand sometimes the difference. They'll still chew up a couch, right? They'll still bark loud and, and maybe not have the control that they need uh, around certain entities. And so uh, the Lord is saying that there are a group of people that look to be sensible. They're kind, all right? You could probably get along with them. You could probably be in a room with them. But you, you still cannot share the holiness of God and some of his principles uh, with people who have that mentality. And then again, the pig is the person who is deplorable, like absolute, just filthy, the adulterers, the unfaithful, the pros, uh, promiscuous, the disloyal, the untrustworthy, the fickle, the unreliable, the, the ones who are hateful, deceitful. Un, uh, unprincipled, immoral, unstable in their relationships, lacking commitment. Uh, we know those people. We know exactly who they are, what they represent. And he says tonight in the scripture, have a discerning heart. I'm, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to discern. Don't give it to him. Let me pause. Thoughts, comments. I got a little bit more. Let me read some comments in the chat. Yeah, someone that doesn't deserve the sacrifice. That doesn't kindle even better. That doesn't appreciate the sacrifice. Right? Um, everyone can't handle the truth. Remember that mo that movie? Which movie was that? That um, um, Jack Nicholas said, you can't handle the truth. That's what Yeshua was saying right here. He's saying in the word of God, in the middle of his close, he's closing now. He's, he's preached chapter five. He's preached chapter six or taught it. And now he's getting ready to come to a close. And he says, before I come to a close, everything I've shared so far, everybody can't handle the truth. Everyone's hearts aren't ready. Everyone isn't in a mindset to even listen. Think about again what he's already taught. 
You love people 70 times 7. You don't give up on people. You, you don't worry. You, you pray. Here's the prayer. You, you give to the needy without needing everyone to see you run up there and put your, your, your gift on the, on the offering. Uh, he, he was very clear about divorce. And he's telling us, everybody can't receive these teachings. They're going to, now where I'm going to go next. And I want us to, to learn as I'm learning. I'm not perfect in my 30 years of, of reading the scripture. I can be taught. So if you got a comment or a question or, or just send it to me, the Lord uh, marks a clear different difference between pulling back from someone who doesn't want to hear the word and someone who's open to the word. Right. Uh, the person who, who's a, a pig or a swine is someone who truly has a different nature. Uh, their character is totally different. And so when you try to even approach them, would a God bless you? Or when was the last time you've been to church? You know, this is what the word says. They're negative. They push back. They live a life that's, again, immoral. Um, whereas the person who they're backslidden. They went to church. They know God. They're just having a tough time. They're receptive to your teaching. They just struggle. Continue talking to that person. Continue praying for that person. Continue whispering in their ear and being an encouragement to them. Uh, that's not who he's talking about here. These are not the dogs and the, the pigs that he's talking about. Uh, the person who you know is trying like they're trying. Right? Continue to talk to them, but do not risk desecration by dealing with people who will not take this holy treasure of divine truth and put it in their hearts. Let me give you some scripture tonight. This is Bible study. I'm going to ask you a question here. I want you to put some things in the chat in a moment, but let's look at a couple of scriptures I'll give you to help us confirm uh, the context of what Christ is saying tonight. Matthew chapter 10, verse 14, if anyone wants to put that in any of the chats here, Sister Kendall, if you want to type into the Facebook chat so people can come back and read it later. And then uh, anybody in, in the TikTok chat, if you want to put this down, Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. He sends them out two by two. They go out. He said, don't take anything with you. Um, and you're going to minister. You're going to heal people. He says, if anyone does not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or that town and shake the dust off your feet. Is Christ being rude right here? Or does he know something we don't know? He pretty much said, if they don't want to listen to you, they don't welcome you. You, you let everybody know I'm a Christian. This is what I stand for. Here's my beliefs. Here's what the Bible says. No, no, I don't believe it that way. Again, it's a difference in healthy debate and helping someone get there versus the person whose mind is already made up. They won't listen. Um, they put a wall up. Proverbs 26 and 11 goes right back to what Yeshua was saying here. If you look at that scripture, Proverbs 26 and 11 as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Again, we have a comparison or an example of how they looked at dogs back then. Someone who was just going to continue doing the same thing. Be very careful wasting your time on those kind of people. You pray. You don't stop praying for them. You don't stop being a light in front of them. But don't spend too much time trying to convince them. The Holy Spirit is going to have to send a laborer. Someone that they will listen to, someone that they'll respect, but they may not hear it from you. Sister Kendall said that movie was uh, a few good men. You can't handle the truth. That's what the Lord is saying tonight in Bible study, that certain people couldn't handle the truth. Sister Angie said there's a difference between a general message and an in-depth teaching. You're absolutely right. What Yeshua was teaching in Matthew 5, and 6, 5 6, and 7 was very in-depth. It was so in-depth that he had to say, everybody won't understand this. Everybody won't grasp the holiness of what I'm trying to share tonight. Donna, good to have you. I'm sorry you've been sick the last couple of weeks. We'll pray for you here toward the end. <laughs> 
somebody said Golden State. This is the high school that my kids went to, when my my daughter went to, and so it was Santa Fe. Um, what about where the woman said, even the dogs, even the scraps from under the master's table? Ron, that's really good. That, that's part one of my references here. And so he does tell, uh, even the, the, the woman brings that up, right? Again, but it's a reference to the fact that even... The dog got scraps. The dogs didn't get anything holy. See, the the commandment that was given in Leviticus chapter 22, Ron, was about them taking what was holy, the thing that was on the altar, the thing that we gave to God. Now I'm going to also give it to the dog. And he said, don't do that. And so then he fast forward and says, don't give holy things. So you're right. The woman says, and let's find that Ron. Ron brings up a good scripture there. I, I had it here on my uh, on my other document. The the woman says, um, I think she wanted healing. Let's find it. Thank you for joining us tonight for Bible study. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7, verses 6 through 11 tonight. I'm going to try to get through the first 30 minutes. That's Matthew 15. Canaanite woman. The Canaanites were regarded as pagans, almost like Samaritans, but not quite. Uh, and the Canaanite woman comes to, to, to Yeshua in 15. And a woman from Canaan was living there, pleading, have mercy on me. King, oh Lord, King David's son, for my daughter has a demon within her. That's why we rebuke demons in the morning. And it torments her constantly. Yeshua gave her no reply, not even a word. Is that what he just said in Matthew chapter 5? 6 and 7? Don't give unholy things to people who aren't prepared. And so then she says, for my daughter has the demon. He didn't reply. Then the the disciples urged him, send her away, send her away. Get her out of here. Tell her to get going. For she's bothering us with all this begging. Then she spoke up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was sent. Uh, then, she, then he said to the woman, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Jesus said to the woman, I was sent to help the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel at this time, not the Gentiles. Someone else was coming to help the Gentiles. But she came and worshiped him, pled again and said, sir, help me. It doesn't seem right to take bread from the children and throw it to the dogs, he said. Again, Yeshua said this. It doesn't seem right. Yes, it is. She replies, it is right. For even the puppies beneath the table, the dogs are permitted to eat the crumbs that fall. Crumbs, crumbs, key word. Woman, Jesus told her, your faith is large and your request is granted. And her daughter was healed right then. So, yes, Ron, uh, that was one instance where because of their faith, he granted the request to the dog or to a Gentile. Also, the difference in this story, Ron, is that she wanted it. She was open. She wasn't closed minded. She wasn't mean. She wasn't angry. She wasn't pushing back against it. She came in faith and he granted it to her because of her faith. I would, I would tell you, Ron, that anyone that's in our lives that has been a wall, we try to preach the gospel, preach the gospel, preach the gospel, and they shut us down. And at some point they say, sir, sir, I'm open now. I'm, I'm, my daughter's sick. I'm open now. Can I get some of those crumbs? I'm open now. I uh, I want some of those holy things. I, it's her faith that connected her to the blessing. How about that, Ron? Very good. Very good. Questions, other questions or comments? Jump in. Acts chapter 18, verse 6. But when they opposed Paul, and became abusive, he shook off his clothes in protest and said to them, 
Your blood will be on your own head. I'm innocent. I tried to help you. I'm now going to go to the Gentiles. Titus 3 and 10. Titus 3 and 10. Not a lot of people preach from Titus or quote from Titus. Titus 3 and 10 says, Warn a divisive person once. And then warn them a second time. And then after that, have nothing to do with them. Now that's a little different. That's a little different than what Yeshua taught us in Matthew 18. Matthew 18, and we read that this morning during prayer. Matthew 18, verse 15, Yeshua says, if your brother sins against you, confront him once. If he doesn't listen, go get somebody else to say, okay, we need to talk to you. And if they still have an attitude, they still don't want to listen, they're still walking around the way they're walking around, you go get a group of people and say, you can't do this. And if he listens, if he says, okay, my bad, I'm sorry. Give me another chance, 70 times seven, 70 times seven. Then the Bible says you're welcome him back in the fellowship. But if he doesn't say, I'm sorry, if he doesn't acknowledge his, his error, if he doesn't acknowledge, then the church can treat him. Watch this as a Gentile, as a publican or pagan. This is this young lady was questions, comments. I'm looking in the chat. Yep. That was Titus three and 10. Turn with me to Philippians three and two. If you're with us tonight, this is Bible study. So we're going through the Bible. I'm giving you scriptures to uh, confirm, validate, to give you some context around what Yeshua was saying in Matthew chapter seven. And we're going to go to our next portion of scripture. Uh, Philippians three, chapter two. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. And then he was again talking about people who would again take what we're teaching, take what's sacred, take the thing that's really important, the priority. This is priority. This is holy. This, this is the most important thing that we can give you. And they turn their nose up to it. They thought that something else was more important. They didn't want to give the word of the Lord the attention that it was due. And he said, watch out for them. You know who they are. Yeshua goes on to say this. And I think we've already read it or we're going to get to it. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But he later on tells us that we're going to know people by their fruit. If you ever want to learn discernment, this is the best place to be in our teachings. We don't come with any denomination, any kind of background, or rules or laws uh, or philosophies. We, we're just reading the Bible verse by verse. And if you want to learn how to discern, Yeshua tells us you should know the difference between a, a dog and a pig. A, a dog looks cuddly. A dog listens and looks as if they're, they're, they're someone who, who can receive it, but they're still a dog. You, you know dogs' tendencies. They tear things up. They're not respectful. And sometimes they get too loud. They can't comprehend. A dog cannot comprehend everything that's going on. They're pretty smart, but not to that extent. Know who they are. And then he says, then you have pigs. People who are just absolutely immoral. They do things that are wrong. Uh, they don't have any cares about what they do. And they continue to wallow in their own mud. They know that they're wrong and they'll keep doing it don't give holy things to those people. Second Philippians. I'm sorry, I said second Philippians. Lord, have mercy. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Look at this one with me tonight. Bible study. Second Thessalonians chapter three. I'm going to read verse six. Then I'm going to skip to verses 14 and 15. In the name of the Lord Yeshua, Hamashiach or Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching received from us. Well, what's the teaching that they received? It's the teaching that Yeshua is teaching us right now, 5, 6, and 7. They don't keep what's here. They're dis divisive, disruptive, causing problems. Stay away. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instructions in this letter. 
So now he's saying at the end of this, this letter or toward the middle of this letter, just kind of keep note. Again, discernment, discernment. Here's how you know they don't keep the teaching. What's the teaching? Don't commit adultery with your heart. Don't look at people that way. Don't commit murder. Don't say to your brother, your sister, you rascal, you fool. Uh, don't treat people that way. What's the, what's the scripture that they don't teach? Uh, you're supposed to bless people who persecute you. Don't do the opposite. Don't curse them. Don't get mad at them. What's the, what's the teaching say? Like, it all goes together. Regard them. Yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. So you're not my enemy. You're just not following the instructions of Yeshua. Yeshua said, there's certain things we just don't do as Christians. There's certain things that we now must follow. If you truly are walking in the light and before I connect with you, before you and I, you know, share contacts and resources and follow through on certain things. I got clear instructions on how to how to separate the chaff from the wheat. We're fruit inspectors. I, I love all the fruit. I love everybody. I, I'm not distancing myself. We're in the world. I'm just not of the world. I, I can still be a light. I can still be salt when people come around me, when I get around certain people. I'll still function with them. I'll still follow along in those group settings, but you won't get my pearls or those holy things. Does that make sense tonight? You you can go to a family gathering, but I'm going to be very careful that I do not share or try to open up to you the most sacred scripture, the most holy followings. I'm not going to try to get on a level that you can't handle. It's too, it's too sacred. You're not ready. Your life is too filthy. It's not important to you, so it's not important to me to share it with you. So let's talk about something else. So you won't trample my father and my savior in my face with your behavior. You won't embarrass me or, or put me in a position where I have to explain um, why I associated with the dogs and the pigs. We, we talked in uh, the last three weeks, we're doing a series on Sunday that's all kind of connected. I'm connecting the two now. If you remember, I'm talking about Samuel and Samuel was raised by Eli. Eli had two boys. Those two boys took the holy things of God and desecrated them. And then Samuel's two boys came along. They're supposed to be holy. They're supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, yet they put themselves in a position to do unholy things. The difference between Eli and Samuel is that Eli tolerated it, accepted it, didn't really address it. Samuel addressed it, took matters in his own hands, took back over, came out of retirement. The difference between the Old Testament and New Testament is that we now have grace. So here's the good news. Everybody who's put a wall up, everyone whose heart has been hardened, we don't give up on them. We pray for them. And, and if the spirit allows us and we get around them, you can test it. You can test to see if they're open. I have friends and family right now, if we can be candid. I got friends and family today that I would not share holy things with that are just not ready. It's no offense. It's just, that's not, we don't, we don't have those kind of conversations, but every now and then I'll just kind of test the water with questions like, did you go to church this Sunday? How was church? What did you learn today? What, what was the preacher talking about? I, I kind of just test the waters to see, you know, where they're at and Hey, what, any good Bible verses you read lately? what did you read on the Bible app this week? Just to give me an idea if I can cross that line. I'll say this to you. And here's another indication. Again, good evening, everybody. We're in Matthew chapter seven tonight, verse six through 11. Don't ever argue with anyone. Don't ever debate with anyone. Don't even get into a, a deep conversation with anyone who's not even reading their own Bible. They're not even reading their own Bible, Racy. Jamie, they're not even reading the word of God. How, how are we going to have a healthy 
dialogue. And I, I am open to conversations. Anyone who's um, been with me on TikTok and you ask me a fair question, I give you a fair answer. I will. We'll, we'll have a really good di di discourse. I'll send scriptures. You send me scriptures. And we try to find what the Lord is saying. We're both open. I don't know it all. But I will not. I will not get into a debate with anybody, Gracie, who does not read the Bible. Like that's just. And that's what Yeshua is teaching you tonight. He's saving us time. He's saving us effort. And you, you know, again, you're a fruit inspector. Your spirit should connect with their spirit. They start saying things that doesn't even line up. I'm going to pause. I'm gonna, I don't know if I need to continue this conversation because it doesn't even sound like you're a Bible reader. And you're just, deba you're just debating to debate. You, you're just pushing back to push back. You haven't given me one accurate scripture yet. And it's okay if people don't know the scripture. That's not the point. We're talking about pigs and dogs. People who are filthy. People who sh should not uh, have holy things. Questions? Let me pause. Break down those walls if you can keep asking. You try. Keep planting seeds. Keep watering. But don't don't give the holiest of holy things to them. So let's ask. Let me pause and we'll ask some questions here. I got a few more scriptures for you. But let's, let's interact in the chat real quick. Real quick. What are some things that you would think are holy or sacred that you should not voice or... Uh, put in front of people who aren't. So I'm putting them in the chat and let's see if we can kind of name five, six, or seven. What are what are some things that someone who's just completely turned off, they're living an, an evil life, they're not listening or willing to listen. We can still pray for them. What are some so what are some signs or some things that they would tramp what are some things they would trample over? Maybe that's a better way of saying it. He said don't give it to them because in the very the the the, the verse that as you're as you're putting them in the chat Here's what he says in the following verse. They will trample on your pearl, pearls and they're going to turn and attack you. If you if you give something that's depraved, uh, someone that is depraved, holy things, and they're not ready for it, they're going to turn on you. So what are some things that you, you wouldn't give them? Who was getting ready to speak to Jamie or Gracie? I didn't hear the question again. What, 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 the question? Is, what, yeah, what, are some, what are some things that we probably should be very careful to not put in front of somebody who's not ready to receive it? What are some holy things in our lives today? Somebody uh, on TikTok said, um, my vision, my dream. That's a good one. Yeah. Somebody said, I won't allow them in my personal space. Sacraments. Yep. Uh, we're not doing Lord's Supper around you. Again, that's holy. Information regarding your marital relationship. Yeah, keep people because the, the marriage bed is holy. It's holy and undefiled. That's really good, Bonita. That's really good. Keep holy things away from people who aren't holy. Your plans and your goals, very good. What else? Keep keep going. This is good. What, it, what the Lord is teaching us tonight? There's certain things that I'll have conversations around certain people, and there's certain things that I won't. Sister Pittman said, "Sister Pittman, good to have you today." Sister Pittman said, "Death. Don't even have conversations about death around people who are unholy because they may not be able to receive it. They may not be able to comprehend it and understand it." That's really good. Y'all got a good list going. What else? Give me some more things that I, I just won't. I just won't have these kind of conversations with you. I love you. We'll talk about the thunder. We'll, we'll talk about you know uh, what happened on on the news. Talk about my latest you know pair of shoes. But I don't know if I can talk to you about these holy things because this is this is sacred. What else? I got a few more for you, but I'm going to see if you can answer some. And this is the Lord teaching us tonight. 
I'll have a conversation with anybody. I'll be light. I'll be salt. I will not give holy things, my pearls. The pearls, again, represent that thing that is sacred, the thing that's most expensive, our treasure in the gospel of Christ. I, I, I won't give it to you. And when you're ready, when your walls are down, when you're ready to receive, when you're ready to open up, then I'll share. As the Holy Spirit is teaching me, but he's also now teaching us tonight how to discern, how to know the difference, when to and when not to. Have you ever been in that situation where you're like, man, should I minister? Should I say something? Is this the right time? Well, he's telling us the type of people, dogs and pigs, versus the people who are open who have faith. The woman that Ron brought up, she had faith. Dogs and pigs don't have faith. Our struggles, y'all are hitting it on the head tonight. Our struggles, I'm not, yeah, I'm not getting ready to go through what I've been through with you because you're going to just trample over them. You're going to give me your personal advice. You're going to try to tell me how, how uh, somebody else handled it. You may tell me the wrong thing. I'm not giving you that. What else? How I'm living right. How to give up sin, my peace. This is good. Lord, thank you for speaking to us tonight. My blessings. Somebody said, my Kendall said my blessings. I'm not, I'm not going into detail about everything the Lord's blessing me with because you, you look at it the wrong way. You think that something weird is happening. You, you're trying to give somebody else the credit and all the credit belongs to the Lord. Here's some things I wrote down. Um, my prayer life, my prayer time, my communication with the Lord. I'm going to be very careful not to allow you into that space. Um, trying to help someone understand baptism, um, worship service, um, and the way that I worship. And so I'll be very careful to keep those things away from people who are pigs and dogs. Uh, they're not a dog will trample over something they don't understand. Uh, they'll laugh at you. They'll point fingers. Why are you listening to that kind of music? Why? Why are you? Wh what is this? What is that? Right. Um, our unity. We're all brothers and sisters. We're closer than brothers and sisters physically because this is spiritual. They won't understand this and I'm not going to try to explain it to them until they can come into this. Um the second coming of Christ. Be very careful having conversations with people who want to know what was it, when is he returning anyway? Um, pigs and dogs, pigs and dogs, dogs and pigs. Let's talk about the Thunder game. But what do you think about SGA, right? Change the subject because they will trample. Yeshua said this tonight. He said, if you give it to them, they're going to trample over it. They're going to trample over your dreams. They're going to trample over your interpretation of the Bible, baptism, um, worship music, confession, ap apologies, sincerity, uh, sincerity. Uh, when we, when I try to share with people how the Lord says 70 times 70, it just goes over people's heads. Just like it did with Peter. At, no, now at some, at some point, you got to draw a line. Not if they said, I'm sorry. My, my friend Brent is on here tonight. On, on the Facebook. Brent said, what's the one on Brent? What if they are family and you want them united with Christ? They may not be evil, but hurt so bad they, they won't understand it or receive it. Do you stop? They will say, I might. Be a holy roller. That's a that's probably a good indication that they're gonna trample over our goodness. Brent, you and I can you asked a real good question for the audience that I know you already know the answer. You just put that on a on a T for me uh, to hit for our friends. It goes back to the scripture. Let's go back to the scripture. And I'll give you some more scriptures tonight that confirm what we speak of. Um Yeshua walked in the town, his home hometown, his own hometown, and they would not receive him. Oh, that's D. I'm sorry, D. I can't, I can't see. Sis, what's going on? D corners, my friend Brent. How you doing? Forgive you forgive me? 70 times seven. <laughs> that's D. 
D, so Jesus went into his own town. He started ministering. He went around the people that knew him since he was a kid. He The same people that when he disappeared at 12, they all went back to look for him and say, where have you been? I'm in my father's house. You know, I was about his business. Those people, cousins, loved ones, aunties, uncles, they didn't receive him. You know what Yeshua did? Did anybody know what Yeshua... 70 times 7 a day, D. A day. What did what did he do? Someone in the chat talk to us. Let's find you want to find that, that story so you can go back and read it later. What did Yeshua do when his own people didn't receive him? Did he stay or did he go? Um, let's see, that's found in, I guess you can say for John chapter one, but there was another place that I'm looking for where he was rejected. Yeah. His own people, John chapter one, verse 10. And here's what we said, D. I don't know if you heard this part portion of it. Um, we still love them. We, we're still salt and light around them. I still do good deeds. I still smile. I still show up to the barbecues. I still love on them. I, I'm still there. I'll talk thunder with you. I'll talk all kind of other stuff. You're just going to now have to see my light. I got to prove it to you th through my consistency, through my forgiving you 70 times. I got to show you uh, through, through the role modeling that I'm going to do. But for me to give you a holy thing, he died, he rose, he went to heaven. There's grace, there's mercy. Um, perhaps I need to ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Let me give you some scriptures. Let's, let's look at this. Um, turn with me. I've given you about five scriptures so far. I'll give you about six more. We may stay on this topic tonight and we can pick up the other next week. Look at look with me at Second uh, Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Second Corinthians chapter six. Verse 14. I love the Living Bible. The paraphrase just kind of hits home sometimes. A prophet has no honor in his own home. That's right. That's right. I tried to explain the immaculate conception to a friend. They didn't get it. <laughs> like, really, Felicia? Yeah. People try to get offended with us because we tell them the truth. And we just said, but this is what it says. Um, and again, I'm open. I'm open to good conversation, really good conversation. Um, and a lot of you know this. We're not debating. We're just studying scripture together. But the person who is, like, again, he's clear tonight with the differences between a dog and a pig. If you're just now catching us, you can go back and watch it on Facebook here later or YouTube when I upload four days worth of content here tonight. Um, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and I, I hope the Holy Spirit is ministering personally tonight to everybody that's listening. Don't team up with those who do not love the Lord. For what do people of God have in common with people of sin? How can light live with darkness? It's one thing for me to be around you for a little bit, but to live with you. And what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a Christian be a partner with one who doesn't believe? And what union can there be between God's temple, holy things, sacred things, and idols? For you are God's temple, the home of the living God. And God has said to you, I will live in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. This is why the Lord has said, leave them and separate yourselves from them. Do not touch their filthy things and I welcome you. And be a father to you and be my sons and daughters. Ask your questions, drop them in the chat. 
Give me your comments. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians. This is Bible study tonight, so we're looking at a lot of Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. This was his first letter to the Corinthians. This is the same Paul that told them how to love, how to be patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not easily offended. Love doesn't demand its own way. Love doesn't get irritable and touchy. Love forgives. Love always believes. Love always goes the extra mile. Love is always... This Paul, in this chapter, to this church, says this earlier. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Uh, not all meaning people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or greedy and swindlers and idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave the whole world alone. But I, I'm now writing to you uh, that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but their life is practicing sexual immorality, greed, idolatry, slander, drunkenness, or swindler. Don't even eat with those people. Don't even go out to dinner with them. Don't go out with people who have practiced, who've made a decision to be that way. Because uh, what does light have to do with darkness? And again, I want to, I, I think what the, there's a difference. There's a difference. I want to be very clear tonight of our example, Yeshua, and our example, Yeshua, the teacher. He's the one that's teaching us to don't put our pearls and our holy things in front of swines and pigs. But someone's going to say, but didn't, didn't, didn't Jesus himself go to dinner with people they weren't a wall they were no longer pigs and dogs they knelt before the lord they humbled themselves before the lord they asked for forgiveness the prostitutes asked for forgiveness Zacchaeus asked for forgiveness everybody who came to him said i'm sorry i get it now i get it i get it i just i want to be a part of this now if some if someone gets it they can be a part of it but until then he's just going to continue doing his miracles living his life he didn't interrupt anybody. He didn't force himself into anybody's life. The one example where he may have interrupted somebody's life was the woman at the well. And he just said, hey, I got some water for you if you want it. Again, he offered her the opportunity to be a part of something holy. I have some water for you if you're interested. She pushed back a little bit. She said, uh, well, my ancestor said that the well is over, that this is the well, Jacob's well. And where y'all drinking at is not even the real thing. He said, again, I can give you something that you'll never thirst again. And those five husbands that you had and the one you're not, the one you're with now, make six. So I can change your life. She felt something change. She went and told everybody about him. It's a difference. It's a difference in sharing the gospel with someone who's open and someone who's closed-minded. Questions, comments. Let me see what questions you guys have. Well, that's what I was going to ask. It's like, um, if we're supposed to be salt and light, I know if you're not equally yoked and, and we're not supposed to spend time with those people, how are we supposed to bring them to Christ? So he tells us. That's a really good question, right? It goes back to Matthew uh, chapter 5, uh, where he says, be light. Live your life in a way that's holy. When people persecute you, don't say anything. When, Where he says, be light. Live your life in a way that's holy. When people persecute you, don't say anything. When, All right. So, so yeah, James... Uh, Gracie, let me turn this around. Good question. I try to multitask here. The way we the way we bring them to, to Christ is with the life we live in. And when the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart, like to still like I give you, I give you a good example, right? I've been around people recently that I I question whether or not they were if this. I know I know their lifestyle. I know how they think. I know how they operate. Um, 
I, I've heard conversations of how they like to act. They've shared with me multiple times that they're a wall, that they're a pig, they're a dog. I'm around them. And again, like I said earlier, I, I, I try to test the water. You know, how was church recently? I try to bring up my own example. Man, I'm blessed. God's been so good to me, man. Um, you know, he's, you know, this, and I start sharing testimonies. And again, you can, your fruit, your fruit inspector, you can start picking up on whether or not they're open or receptive. Oh, really? Versus, okay, well, cool. The good, good meeting you and they go their separate way and we pray for them. We pray that the Holy Spirit just continues to soften their heart. I say, keep trying. I'm not saying don't try. I'm just telling you that the Bible says maybe you're very careful about the holy thing. So maybe, Gracie, you have a conversation at a high level. God's good. But we're not going to get into the details of what murder is, what real adultery is. Real adultery is when you look at something you shouldn't have looked at and you lusted. They may not be able to handle that conversation, but they can handle maybe a uh -huh. conversation of... Uh, I just, I just want to be, I just want to fellowship with you. Did I accidentally invite somebody to the chat? How did, how did, I, how did that happen? I'm confused. Am I still live on TikTok? Yes, you are. Do y'all see somebody else on there? Is it just me? It's just you. It's so weird. This is other person on the screen. All right. Um, questions, comments. What do you think about this tonight? I'm sorry. Let me go back to Gracie. Gracie, did I answer your question? Did that help a little bit? So you nodding your head. I think you said yes. Jamie, what do you think tonight about holy things and pearls, dogs and swine? That's really good. I mean, I'm going to have to definitely rewatch this because I was in and out driving okay. home. But um, yes, what I'm gathering is good. And what Gracie's saying, you know, it, it is, you know, it is hard. Sometimes it can be challenging, but we're also supposed to be the example, too. But, boy, every day is just a battle, whether it's with your spouse or somebody in the family. Or... Yeah. Got to try to love them and be kind. Yeah. Be the example. Two scriptures, I'll give you three more. We're going to close this out tonight. Look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 15 with me. Revelation chapter 22. Sister Pittman, this is toward the very end. This is he's wrapping it all up. He's telling us exactly the details of what's going to go down at the very end. And in 22, he he kind of talks about the New Jerusalem and how it's going to be set up and all the different um, um, jaspers that we'll see. That makes up the temple. There will be no sun because he'll be the sun. There'll be no more crying. And then verse 15, he says this. Don't seal up verse 10. Don't seal up what I've written. Verse 12, I'm coming very soon. Verse 13, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and end. Verse 14, blessed are those who accept this teaching, wash their robes, walk in the holiness. Verse 15, I'll read it from two different versions. Living Bible says, outside the city are those who have strayed away from God, the sorcerers, the immoral, the murderers. Remember, he already taught us what a, a moral person what, what was. It's the person who, whose heart's not right. They, they've already done it in their heart, their lifestyle. They've already practiced it. Murderers, idolaters. All those who love to lie, boy, they love to lie, and so forth. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to tell you and tell all the churches all these things 
I am both David's root and his descendants. I am the bright and morning star. Uh, the King James or the NSAB reads outside are the dogs. So the Living Bible took the word dogs out, but I thought it was very significant that Yeshua uses dogs again. No accident. Uh, it wasn't a happenstance that he chose to use the word dog. Remember, we talked about a dog being someone who pet friendly, uh, maybe somewhat uh, domesticated, uh, someone who has a little bit of sense, but not all the sense, not, not completely filthy. But he goes on to say outside of the dogs, those who practice magic, black arts, sexual immorality, murder, idolatry. Everyone who loves practice falsehood. They're going to get a chance. They get a chance every day. Every day they wake up, they get the same mercy and grace. Every day they wake up, they scroll across our TikToks and our Facebooks, and they get a chance. And our prayer for them is that the Lord continues to move on their hearts. Everybody that's on my prayer, I got a personal prayer list of people that are just lost. And I'm trusting God that he will save them before it's too late. I know he will. It may not be me. They, they stop listening to me. And so I asked the Lord to send a laborer. Send, send a friend, a, a cousin, somebody their age, somebody that they'll listen to. Send somebody that they'll respect. Like that's been my prayer. And I have seen people over time turn their hearts to the Lord. But as far as tonight's teaching, do not give sacred things. Do not hang around. Do not join yourself to pigs and dogs you know pigs and dogs because they're just filthy they say filthy things they do filthy things they do things that are out of order he's very clear two more scriptures i'm gonna close out here tonight i'll just give them to you and read them um first corinthians 2 14 the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from god from the spirit of God. They consider it foolish. They can't understand them. When we say you can't sleep around. You you can't lie. You, you shouldn't cross the line. You shouldn't think like that. It's foolishness to them. Because they can't discern this. This is spiritual discernment. There are certain conversations. Even right now. Happening on TikTok and Facebook. Around certain uh, organizations. I'll just put it like that. Because we're not going to get into that de debate tonight. And you have to walk in the spirit to hear what the Lord is saying and not what people are saying. Even the elect's going to be fooled. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate of people who can hear what the Lord is saying. And everybody who's caught up on uh, the things of this world, the treasures of this world, they defend the world, their moral uh, immorality with the world. He just said what's going to happen to him in Revelation 22. Um, but this is where grace comes in. Because every morning we get to wake up and say, Lord, give me another chance. We get to be like the, the Samaritan woman. We can be like the Canaanite woman that we read about tonight. We can be like the prostitute. We can be like Zac Zacchaeus. We can even be like, uh, uh, which Pharisee was that? I should know this. Who came to him in the middle of the night? Uh, Nicodemus? I don't want anybody to know. And I'm coming to Jesus. How do, how do I tell me about this being born again, again? How, how does this work? How does a man re-enter his mother and come back out? I'm, I'm curious. He was open. He didn't put up a wall. He was no longer a pig. He was no longer a dog. Yeah, Yeshua said, woe unto you Pharisees and you Sadducees. He pulled himself out of that. He, always, oh, he said, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be a part of that. Ephesians 5 and 11 have nothing to do with the fruitfulness, have nothing to do with the fruitless, fruitless deeds of darkness. Do you know people who their deeds are just dark? Why would he tell us not to have any? It's a difference in ministering to you and then spending my weekend with you. But rather, you're supposed to expose them. You're supposed to bring them to the light. 
The Bible says it's even shameful to even mention the stuff that they do in secret. I got some friends and some cousins that I would even want to tell my wife sometimes the things that they told me is just so deplorable. Like you did what? Brother, you you come on, man. You can't do that. You got to you got to leave that alone. That's me talking. Man, I, you know, you know how it is. You know how it is, man. No, I don't know how it is. First Corinthians 15, 33. Last scripture tonight, and then we're going to pray. First Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be deceived. Don't be misled. Don't think you slick. Don't think you can handle it. Don't think that you're above it all. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Pigs and swine will have you smelling like pigs and swine. What is what's that other saying? It's not in the Bible. Somebody said if you if you if you're around fleas enough, I mean if you're around I, I said it wrong. If you're around do dogs enough. You're going to catch fleas. Let me just go back through the scriptures tonight unless you want to write them down. I'll read some comments and then we're going to get out of here. Thank you again tonight for joining us for a Bible study. We picked up tonight on Matthew chapter 7. I didn't even get to the next verse. We'll do all that next week. Ask and you can find, seek, knock. We'll get into all that next week. We go verse by verse tonight. We literally went verse by verse, verse six and seven of Matthew chapter seven. Um, scriptures I gave you tonight was first Corinthians 15. If you want to read that whole chapter, it's there. 1533 Ephesians five and 11 Romans 16 and 17 first Corinthians two and 14 Revelation 22 and 15. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 and 11. Somebody can go back and watch this later. Just go to the end and write the scriptures down. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. I uh, gave you 2 Thessalonians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. That's easy to remember. Philippians 3. Titus 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Acts 18. Proverbs 26, 11, and then Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. Lord, thank you for washing us tonight with your word. Thank you for the opportunity to grow. I thank you for um, teaching us how to discern. You're teaching us how to discern uh, pigs and, and dogs. And you've even taught us now how to approach them. I ask Holy Spirit that you continue to show us. And I ask that you would continue to be with us. We still want to be the light. We still want to be salt. So help us to, to shine so bright that people come searching us out, asking us, okay, how, how, do I, how do I find that peace that you have? You're never bothered. You're never worried. No, I am. You just can't see it. I just put my trust in him. Lord, help us to be that person. We pray for all of our friends and loved ones out here tonight. Sons, daughters, moms and dads, nieces, nephews, cousins, husbands, wives, everybody, Lord, who doesn't know you, we pray for them. We ask that you would be patient with them, be patient with us. Lord, if you would please just soften their hearts to get to know you. Lord, if you would please give them a window, just a small window that we can present to them the gospel as did mentioned. Lord, I, I'm asking you personally for people I know in my life. They're out there right now. They're out there. They're not, they're nowhere close. I just want to, I just want to present to them your saving grace, your amazing grace, your love. Thank you. That's our prayer. And everyone said, hallelujah. Listen, thank you again. If you caught half of this or just parts of it, you can go over to Facebook right now and get the entire Bible study tonight on Facebook. Because as soon as I hit save or end, it's going to load on Facebook. 
Uh, if you like following me on YouTube, give me about an hour. I still have to download. I'll put Sunday and two Sunday night's message, Tuesday's Bible study on YouTube, and then Monday and Tuesday's prayers on YouTube. I'll do that here in the next hour if they download in time. For everyone else, thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the morning at 6 a.m. We pray every morning on TikTok. We pray for people. It's a ministry that the Lord has given all of us. And so we, we, we sit there and we wait for people to put their prayer request in the chat. And it's about 40 of us. And we just pray. I'm the facilitator. The Lord has called me to get on there and, and I pray out loud. But then everyone else is praying silently, reading scripture silently, sharing testimonies in the chat. So if you want to pray with us every morning at 6 a.m., you don't even have to join us every morning. You don't even have to stay the full hour or two. Jump in there, jump out. We'd love to have you come over and welcome uh, to, to my page on TikTok. For everybody else, y'all have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. You got a short week for those that are working. Enjoy your next three days. Two days. What's today? Tuesday. Three days. All right. Sister Pittman said, just remember association requires participation. That's good. That's good. Jamie. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary you. to you. God bless you. Still not feeling well. So. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I wake up feeling better. I just know it.